the workouts themselves are not actually when the progress occurs, when the adaptation occurs. Fitness and in exercise, recovery is where the real results actually emerge, where we get better. If indeed recovery is when progress emerges, when we get better, well then anything that supports our recovery and gets us better at recovering ought to increase our rate and our degree of progress. What people really want is some sort of change. The only way that happens is we talk about the equation of stress causes adaptation, but only if you can recover from it. We then have to ensure that our recovery outpaces the stress input or else we will, no adaptation will occur. And in fact, what happens is you will actually be in a negative spot and start going backwards. It's important to differentiate between adaptation and optimization. If you're optimizing for the current moment, you're almost surely compromising delayed adaptation. If I were to say, do the thing right now that makes you feel the absolute best in the world. And you're like, great, you took a nap and you ate a donut. Like, awesome, you feel amazing. But you know, it's causing long-term issues. This recovery conversation is playing this game of balancing immediate gratification with delayed gratification. We're trying to cause adaptations that will get us where we want to get in the Olympics or World Championships or World Cup or wherever we're going to be. That's the framework we have to think about recovery. And you're going to be pushing into the absolute golden target, which is what we call functional overreaching. So you have overreached what you can currently do and it results in a functional outcome. And what we mean functionally here is performance is enhanced. So functional overreaching is the golden target. Recovery time for functional overreaching is typically a few days to maybe even a week or so. If you were to continue past that point, you may actually be into what we actually call overtraining. This is where a lot of folks are who end up in this vicious cycle. And so you're like, man, I'm not getting the results I want. I'm going to train harder. I'm not getting results I want. I'm going to train harder and harder. But because recovery isn't improved, you just end up in the same spots and you end up then just either blowing up or quitting and you're not getting where you want. So what are some tools that we can use to enhance our recovery? Number one is actually listening to slow paced music. There's evidence to suggest fast paced music may slow down your recovery and slow pace would actually enhance this. You can also use what we call down regulation breathing, laying on your back, getting into this dark, quiet sort of area. And then just breathing through your nose, what you're going to do is inhale for somewhere between like three to eight seconds. And then whatever number you choose, you keep that same tempo. Let's say you chose to do a five second inhale. That's gonna take you up vertically. And then horizontally for your box is a five second hold. And then a five second exhale, and then a five second hold. Repeat that for the time domain. 10 minutes is probably better, but if you can just at least give me three, that'll work. What are the most effective tools to push back on that soreness and dissipate it? Here's what you can do. You can actually wear compression gear. That will help put some tighter fitting clothes on, leisure wear or compression gear if you have it. And wear that really for as long as possible. You can also use the physical hand. So this would be massage and body work, moving fluid in and out of the tissue, as well as potentially enhancing blood flow. Cold water immersion specifically is effective at reducing muscle soreness. Do you actually want the cortisol to reduce inflammation and initiate or participate in the recovery process. You will not see any progress from exercise training without a large spike in cortisol. How to have a healthy pattern of cortisol release. The basic contour of a healthy pattern of cortisol secretion is to have highest levels of cortisol in the morning that's associated with waking you up. Mm -hmm. Viewing bright light, ideally from sunlight early in the day, actually can lead to a 50% increase in that cortisol spike. Totally. This sets in motion a cascade of things related to enhanced mood and alertness. Many things will spike cortisol throughout the day. Stress, cold water, exercise, bright light with exercise, with caffeine, these things will all increase cortisol. If you're training for, say, muscle hypertrophy, there's emerging evidence that suggests actually looking at yourself in the mirror and even flexing in between sets um, can actually be advantageous or it can augment muscle gains. Work on social connection. That's actually been shown to improve recovery over time. Journaling or meditation, and those have an acute effect as well as a chronic effect. Just use a couple of the tactics based on what you have and what is easily available in your situation.